same power user. Oh. Okay, so we're looking at the rapid development platform. Mm -hmm. So the principle of rapid development is rapid open source development is we want to be able to design, build, test, and document for replication the particular technology that we have our project on very quickly. And one way to do this is to integrate all these processes together so that you don't spend double time doing each of them separately. And what the rapid development platform has is three major components that allow you to do this integrate the various processes of, of development and let's get just down to it. So before going with the uh, just a summary of what the three major components are, it's a file folder, it's a diagram, and it's an index. But before I delve into what these three, uh, three things are, just like to mention that after you designate a project to start, you also want to first handle the uh, Number one, the collaborators and how you want to uh, work collaboratively in terms of communication and uh, procedures for handling different sections of the project. And secondly, the, you want to handle the local and remote information repositories, local being, say, on your own computer, and then remote being, say, by GitHub, right? So th those are pretty important things to handle. And now, back to the actual rapid development platform pieces. The components folder has a bunch of folders like 1, 2, 3, and each of these numbers refer to a particular part of the technology. Of uh, a single project? Of a single project, that's correct. Okay. And that's as so, far as so I get from now. Each project would have its own like, three things like that. Each project would indeed have its own file folder, its own components folder, with its own set of component folders, one, two, three, and so on. Uh, the diagram, right now, if I open this, you're just going to see a blank page. But on that, you can do a lot. What is this program, and where can I get it? Okay, this is Inkscape. It's an open source vector graphics program. Uh, if you Google Inkscape and go to the download section uh, of the Inkscape home site, you should be able to download it. It's cross-platform, so it should work out well. So, as you can see, you can make all sorts of edits in Inkscape, and I'll show you a more particular example later. So, that's all you need to see for now. And the index, there's a bit more information, because what I'm showing you now is the development template, what you can rapidly copy-paste into a particular project to get started off quickly, instead of writing all this down every time. So, the categories uh, section is right here, and you can expand this like by adding more rows as necessary. And it might be fastener, it might be rectangular bar, it might be steel, it might be resistors, it might be electronics. So the versatility of this category section is that you can define yourself how, hol how holistic, how general the category is depending on your particular technology. So if your technology is, say, a power supply, then you want to get specific as resistors. But if your project is a much a greater level thing, like, say, a vehicle, you may want to just have electronics and make... Uh, and just avoid overcomplicating the project documentation and leave the electronics say as say you put the category electronics here the reference number is one quantity one and it might be the uh, the excel uh, the encoder system and then the encoder system would be its own particular project and you, as you can see you could separate various projects and increase or decrease the level of complexity of a particular project by doing this kind of modularization. So category, reference number, you usually want to start off with going one and then dragging this all the way down so you have a nice row of numbers to work with. And I'll show you a more specific example. That's pretty much what you need to get started off with understanding. The category down below, so like you put in fastener down here. Sure, and you put you fastener more, here. Be more detailed about what type of fastener that is within the category. Exactly. Right here is basic specifications. 
let's say this would be M12X 1.75 thread pitch and you can and for parts that are really complex like say it's a particular machine part that's supposed to serve the function of say a vice mm -hmm. then you want to get and that would be an assembly for instance then you actually want to make only the basic specification contain the word vice as its function and then go to the components folder and what was it it was number two so inside the components folder, inside two, you would put uh, fabrication drawings, maybe you would put exploder part diagrams, all sorts of files that expand on the basic specification that we found back in the index, and so, so as to make it more understandable, and especially for fabrication, so you could put uh, fabrication drawings in there. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once you see the specific example, it'll be much clearer so, so what's so happening. So for certain things, like if you put the index real quick. Sure. Like for a fastener, if it's mm -hmm. just a single part, you wouldn't need to have, like you have a folder for it, but you wouldn't necessarily have anything in it, except for like a picture of it and like source materials and things like that. Uh, you can also put the source link here. So okay. there is versatility as to where you can put the information. Mm -hmm. uh, for fasteners, for a hardware project, you'd probably put a model in there, okay. and it'd probably be just the model of the screw. What looks or, like. Yeah. Okay. And so what does the internet do you know? I'll fix it after this. Uh, okay, so to the specific example, so as you can see in this cold saw example, we have the diagram, the index, and the components folder, the three major pieces of the rep development platform. And if you pop on the index, you'll see that there are these categories, rectangular bar, round bar, processed assembly, fastener, and other. And what's very nice about this is you can change these categories and change these change the uh, which items are applied to which category very easily because the reference number, which is what really matters for identifying a certain component, is independent of the category in which the component belongs in. If the category were to be part of its name, say if, uh, if a round steel component were named uh, like RS11, right, then if you change the component, category, then you would also have to change the name, the, the reference number, right. which means you would also have to change it on the file folder and the diagram along all instances of that, uh, of that name. So that's where the ease of editing comes really into play if you have a reference number that is completely independent of what the part actually is. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that's the major aspect of, that, that's a major rationale for separating the reference number from the features, the specifications of the component. Uh, and you can easily see how there's basic specifications here and later on as we get into more complex materials we just uh, write down the function of these here and we have the reference numbers here so instead of putting the specifics in the spreadsheet as it's too complex you put it in the exactly, you put it in the components folder and if you refer to this diagram uh, 21 is the reference number for the base plate function. So if you go to 21 here, you'll see that we have a whole suite of files that explains what the base plate is in terms of its fabrication drawings and its model so that you can use it for uh, assemblies. Is there an assembly like, like a step by step instructions? And that's where we're getting to. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for fabrication, you use a combination of the index, the components folder, and here's, here's where we go to see the relationships between the components and also give you a picture of what you need to do to build the entire cold saw in this case. So as you can see, you take x1 means quantity 1, so the first number is the reference number and x something means just the quantity you take one x one, which is which up here is a rectangular bar, steel one inch by twelve inch by twenty four inch, and you take that steel piece and change it into twenty one x one, and you use the fabrication drawing as you as we saw before in the folder, right here, right twenty one here, and you build out the base plate, and you do the same thing for this 
2x1 becomes 22x1 and 23x2, and so on and so forth. Would it theoretically be possible to eventually have like something like this on the internet, and you just like click on this, and it goes to a directory that has 4.1, and then click on here, so you don't have to like, go in between folders and stuff, it just like links you back and forth? Yes, you can do an integrated software that allows you to just navigate the diagram, and the folder just comes up as in a pop-up. Okay. That's not a window, say, but it's just like uh, it goes at the side. And it, it, the same thing could happen with, say, the, it'd be nice to get to the point where it's integrated enough so that you can all view the index and the file folders just from the diagram mm -hmm. because the diagram is the most comprehensible and it's the one designed for fabrication. Right. So that's that. Uh, you keep on continuing that pattern of you take a component 4x1 you cut it out and process it into these other components then you take say four of these components that were processed and then you combine them to make an assembly in this case it's a support assembly and if we go to say 51x1 in the components folder we should be able to find fabrication drawings and a bunch of whatever notes that we had but here's the interesting part not only do these files contain the design and build preparation files, but also the documentation, the videos and pictures that you take during the build process can be immediately put into whatever folder you are on to do the fabrication. So you would have to go to this file to do the fabrication anyway because you need access to, say, this fabrication drawing, right? And while you're in the folder, you'd be taking pictures of the process for future reference and for application, and you could directly put it onto the folder you already have up. So here is where the integrated part of documentation comes in. It's very easy because you're already in the folder and you're using this. Uh, so how, when you start combining components and putting like the final product together, yep. are there separate folders for that? Like where are the instructions for that? Because once you have all your components, is like is the final like 50, 60, whatever folder like the actual quilt saw itself? That's correct. So before we saw the transition from a piece of steel to a base plate and then we saw how we could take these four pieces and make a fabrication drawing for a support assembly and then you eventually get to the point where you have all these major assemblies, the base assembly, the swivel, swivel assembly, the vice assembly, the rotation assembly, the blade guard assembly, the blade assembly, the hold stop, and then you put all of those together into the cold saw assembly for which you can have a fabrication drawing to explain the process. So by virtue of the diagram and the file folders and the information you put into those file folders, you can explain how to replicate a technology in parallel instead of step by step. And one of the major advantages of parallel is you can have more collaboration and it's uh, on, on the replication and it's easier to see what modules can be re effectively separated plus it's easier to edit if you want to make changes to an existing version of the cold saw say if I want to change from using one swivel block that's the support for the ro one of the rotating mechanisms to just one of them all I would have to do is change this to a one and then change the uh, relevant assembly fabrication diagrams uh, in the component folders and the quantity in the index and I'll be able to make this major change to how the mechanism functions. So this is saying essentially from one eight number eight component you can make all of these parts? That's correct. Okay. Yes, yes. So it's uh, another thing actually is important to note is you can take you can choose just like for the uh, categories, right? You you choose whether it's resistors specific or electronics. Now electronics is very general relative to resistors but matter is much more general relative to electronics, right? So you can see how you can like categorize these however generalized you want. There's flexibility in that and you can adapt it for your particular project. But the same thing happens with the diagram where you can have an 8x1 which is a long piece of steel and you don't need to carry over directly to handle block. If this handle block is enormously complex, for instance, you don't even uh, you may just be able to take all the all the components in this first line here, put a line underneath all of them, so just like a line from here to there, 
right? And just put a uh, cold saw right underneath. So take this cold saw, which is right here, and put it there. So, but because the cold saw is complex, it's relatively complex, you can't do this effectively because there would be way too much information that you have to put into the particular file folder of the cold saw assembly because you'd be taking the entire contents of all of this and smushing it into the cold saw assembly. Exactly. But you do have the flexibility to be able to change how many components that a particular uh, path So takes. it's like an exploded part diagram within an exploded part diagram within an exploded part diagram. <laughs> That's one way to put it. So, yes, I just wanted to highlight. Cold saw assembly. Mm -mm. That's still there. Okay. Yep, copy paste. Copy paste is good. Beautiful. Yes. So that's pretty much it.